this is the great news for anybody who is running local models, especially using Llama CPP. The team just released their own web UI or graphical user interface. This is minimalist, but extremely efficient and performant. If you have worked with local models, Llama CPP is basically the first project that enabled people to run inference for local models. And projects like Olama were built on top of Llama CPP. Even though it has support for almost any backend under the sun, it didn't have its own web UI. So people used to use something like Open Web UI to interact with Llama CPP based models through the Llama CPP server. Now, this is a great project. However, it's extremely bloated at this point. There's also a web UI from Olama, which is pretty neat. However, this is not open source. So it's really great to see that the Llama CPP team has finally decided to create their own web UI. As I said, it's extremely performant. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set this up and we'll also walk through a number of different features. So let's get started. So here's how the new interface looks like. You have the model name, the total context that is available, and then you can also add files as context. Now in comparison, here's how the Olama web UI looks like. So very similar, although there are some subtle changes here and there. Now to install it based on the operating system that you have a few options. For Windows, you can mainly use Wing for Linux and Mac, you have more options. I am going to be using Homebrew because I am going to be running this on an M2 Max with 96 gigabytes of VRAM. So the installation process is relatively simple. We need to use brew install llama.cpp. I have already installed it, so it's not going to run. Now, in order to run a model, you just need to provide the hugging face ID of the model that you want to run. So here is a quick example. First, we will start the Llama CPP server. Then you need to provide the Hugging Face repo ID. This is GPT OSS 20 billion in GGUF format. And then you want to point which port along with what URL you're going to be using. So right now we want to host this on a local host. I have already downloaded the model. It's about 12 gigabytes in size. So once the model is up and running, you will be able to access this through this port on localhost. And here you see that the interface looks pretty simple. We're going to look at some of the options, which makes it a lot more powerful compared to Olama. But let's first run a very simple quick test. Hey, can you tell me about yourself? And who is the creator of this model? Okay, so I am actually happy with the transcription. I will just copy this because I also want to run this in Olama as well. And you can actually see that the speed of generation is pretty fast, right? Now we are getting about 84 tokens per second, which is pretty awesome for this machine. It generated about 615 tokens. So it shows you these neat statistics, which is pretty nice. Now in comparison, I have already loaded the model on Olama. So we're going to run the same command here. Olama seems to be taking some time, but I think the speed of generation is comparable in both cases. Now, unfortunately, I don't think Olama directly gives you the number of tokens that are generated or the tokens per second. Now we will have to compare it for longer prompts where we have to process a long context, but in terms of options, you can set up your own API key. You can provide a system message. For theme, you can select system, light or dark. So I'm going to just keep it system. There are some other statistics that you want. And also you can provide files as context. Now, since it's based on Llama CPP, you have a lot more options. So you can set up your temperature, top K, top P. It's extremely customizable, which is pretty awesome, right? It also lets you set the penalty, which is pretty neat, right? Now, the problem is that for reasoning models, it doesn't let you set up the reasoning effort, at least in this initial version. On the other side, if you look at the reasoning traces of Olama, you can actually set the reasoning effort. So for example, if you go here, we can set the reasoning effort for GPT OSS because it's a reasoning or thinking model. 
However, on the other side, Olama doesn't really give you a lot of options. The only thing that you can control is basically the context length. Okay, now let's add some long context and see what's going to happen. So you can attach different types of context. If the model that you're using has multimodal inputs, then you can attach images and audio files. Right now, we can only attach PDF and text files. And basically, it just parses the file, put it in context of the model. So it's not really doing RAG, but rather in context retrieval. Okay, so I just added the O3 mini system card, which is about 20 to 22,000 tokens. So it should be pretty reasonable context that it has to process. Can you tell me what this paper is about? What are the different features that are introduced in this new model? And how does it compare with existing models? Okay, this is going to be my prompt. Now, what I'm going to do is before I send this in, I also want to bring my GPU utilization for this. For some reason, there was a spike here, but let's send this in. Okay, so at the moment, it's processing all of the text file. Most probably, it's loading the text file, reading it, but it seems like now the processing has started. You can actually see that spike here. I don't really see anything on my CPU yet, but it's taking its sweet time. Although I assume that the generation is going to be pretty fast, right? So we can see that it was about 21,000 tokens. Right now it's generating around 60 tokens per second, which is pretty neat. And it is utilizing the GPU on my M2 Max, right? However, something I have noticed when it finishes processing, is processing these long context files, it puts a lot of stress on the CPU and you actually start hearing the fans, which I haven't heard it in a long time. So right now it's still generating and it seems like the fans are kicking in a little. I'm going to wait for a little bit more. Now it's a relatively small model. So that means it's probably not that accurate in retrieval. It generated about 3000 tokens in the output at about 55 tokens per second. Now let's process the same thing on Olama as well. So let me add that file. And since I'm using the same model, so we're going to just keep the reasoning effort to default. All right, let's send this in. I'm going to also start a stopwatch to see how long this actually takes. So right now, it seems like it's processing the prompt. I don't really see any outputs. Yes, the GPU kicks in and Let's wait for it to see how long it takes in order to generate a response. Okay, so we are almost 20 seconds in that it started to generate a response. The chain of thought definitely looks a lot longer compared to what Llama CPP was generating. Okay, so here was just the chain of thought, which means probably Llama CPP is running this in low reasoning effort. Okay, we are about a minute and 40 seconds in and Olama is still generating the chain of thought. And you can actually hear the fans kicking in. Okay, so it took about three minutes, 22 seconds. The generated response is really concise compared to what the reasoning tokens were. But I think the response generated by the Llama CPP version is definitely much more comprehensive compared to the Olama version. Now, some more features, you can actually run parallel conversations using the same web UI. So for example, here are two different chat sessions. They send in the first one, then they go to the second one, send in that. And since it's interacting with the Llama CPP version, which can work with multiple simultaneous users, it's able to run multiple different parallel chat sessions, even for the single user, right? Which is a pretty neat capability. And the same is true for multiple image conversations as well. So you can send in multiple different images in multiple different chat sessions. And the reason is that this is just added as a context to a chat session. So it doesn't really matter what type of input you're using, but you can run multiple different conversations in parallel. It also supports in structured outputs. So for example, if you have a specific schema that you want to use in your output, you can just copy that go to the developer settings and then 
define that custom JSON schema here. And the model, if smart enough, will be able to stick to that custom schema. So for example, here we have set up everything and now they provided multimodal inputs and you can see that it generates responses in that custom schema that was defined by the user. So this is extremely powerful and I highly recommend to use this instead of any other third party web UIs if you are running your models in Llama CPP. Anyways, do let me know what your experience with this new Llama CPP web UI looks like and what you think about this. It's a really great option for running local models. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.